Welcome, Welcome to, to Echo. Today we are going to study echoes. We're going to find out what kind of materials are good for causing echoes, and what kind of materials prevent them or absorb echoes. Before we get started, I'd like to show you my greatest, greatest echoes. Echo. First up, First up the, the tube, tube slide, slide echoes. echoes. Hey, Mrs. Allforce, I'm inside a slide, tube slide, and I want you to listen. Can you hear my echo? Echo! Right there is the slide I'm gonna go down, but do you hear the sound bouncing? It's echo! So when I scream, ah! it echoes. Next up, Next up the, the snow, snow echoes. echoes. <whistles> Hello! Goodbye! Science rules! <laughs> and, now, and now, the desert, the desert echoes. echoes. Right. Hello! Science rules! So you know so what, you an, know echo what an echo sounds, sounds like, 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 but what, but is, what is an echo? An echo. Echoes are created when sound bounces or reflects off of a surface. Just like the ping pong ball bounces back when I drop it on the table, sound can bounce back too. That's why we hear an echo. Once sound is produced, it travels outward in all directions until it reaches a different medium. When it encounters this new medium, the sound can continue traveling through the new medium become absorbed by the new medium, bounce back into the original medium, which would be reflecting or echoing, or engage in some combination of these possibilities. Look at this image of sound waves. The sound waves are coming from the boy's mouth. Those are the solid blue lines. And then they hit the brick wall and they bounce back. So you can see those dotted lines. Those are the sound waves bouncing back. What's coming back or being reflected are what we hear as echoes. Whenever I talk about echoes, people always bring up bats. Do you know why? Well, it's because of echolocation. Bats navigate and find insect prey using echolocation. They produce sound waves at frequencies above human hearing, called ultrasound. The sound waves emitted by bats bounce off objects in their environment. Then, the sound returns to the bat's ears, which are finely tuned to recognize their own unique calls. Scientists and managers can identify and study bats by recording their calls with specialized microphones and recording devices. The bat calls can be translated into forms humans can hear and see. Some materials can actually absorb sound, and that doesn't mean they are stopping the sound. What it means is they're preventing those sounds from being reflected. I bet you've seen sound absorbers at school before, maybe in your cafeteria or in the gym. To better, to better understand, understand echoes, echoes, we are going, we are to, go going to go on a field trip. trip. What I want you to do is visit various locations in and around your home. Try the kitchen, bathroom, your bedroom, outside, hallway, and any other locations you want to test too. When you go to these different places in and around your home, make a variety of noises at each location. Listen to the sounds. What do you hear? So as you do this, notice which locations were best for echoing. Which ones were the worst for echoes? Those would be the best for absorption. What kind of surfaces are in those locations? All right, go, All right, take, go a take a break and do your echo field, field trip, trip before, before continuing, continuing on. on.
All right. All right. Let's, Let's discuss, discuss the, the results. results. Remember, my results might be different than yours. One great place to find an echo is in the bathroom. Think about it. In the shower, the smooth and hard surface is what sound is bouncing off of. So sound travels all over in the shower. And so a bathroom is a really great spot for echoes. And if you've ever heard anybody singing in the shower, it's because of those echoes. <laughs> You probably have some great sound absorbers in your room too. Check these guys out. They are absorbing sound every time I talk into them. Maybe you've even heard somebody tell you to yell into a pillow when you've been upset. It does help absorb that sound. <laughs> <laughs> your bedroom probably has some really great sound absorbers too that you didn't even think about. Think about your blankets, they absorb the sound, and your pillows, and they make you so comfy and sleepy and they're sound absorbers. You've probably noticed these fun sound absorbers in my video this year. Do you know what they are? Well, they're curtains. And curtains on a window help absorb the sound because think about what a window does. A window is smooth and hard. So when I talk out of it, you hear that echo, right? Or maybe you didn't hear it, but you know that sound can bounce off of a window. So we put curtains over them to block light and to do some other things, to give us some privacy. However, they also absorb sound. What do you think carpeting does in a house? Do you think it absorbs sound or makes an echo? All right, so carpet's good for absorption. What about a wood floor? Do you think a wood floor would absorb or echo the sound waves? The wood floor is good for echoes. Let's check out some other locations to see if they make great echoes or not. First up, we're going to school. Let's check out my empty classroom. What do you think? Do you think there's gonna be a lot of echoes in my empty classroom? My empty, My empty classroom, classroom sure, sure does, does make a lot, make a lot of, echoes. of echoes. You already know that the cafeteria echoes a lot and the gym does as well. That's why we have those sound absorbers on the walls. Hmm, where else can we go? Oh, I know, the hockey rink. That place echoes a lot. <laughs> What about an indoor pool like this one at Ohio State? Do you think it's gonna echo or absorb sounds? Sound sure does echo a lot when you're in an indoor pool. What about this? Does a marching band have to worry about echoes? Marching bands have lots of echoes that they deal with when they play outside. Think about it. They have a lot of surfaces that sound is being reflected or bouncing off of, causing those echoes. A lot of times that causes a sound delay too. Here's my last location. It's the Sydney Opera House located in Sydney, Australia. And the Sydney Opera House is used for just that, operas, singing. So I know they don't want sound to echo. If you go inside the Sydney Opera House, you'll see this. Places like the Sydney Opera House, made for singing and events, are supposed to have great sound absorbers so sound doesn't bounce all around. But actually, the Sydney Opera House has been criticized for not having very great acoustics because they say the sound bounces all around. 
But do you know one thing that helps absorb sound? It's not in this image. People. People are actually sound absorbers, so when there are people in the audience, it helps absorb the sound even more. That's it for our Echo Field Trip. Did you get similar results to mine? Now it's time to sum it up. Echoes are created when sound bounces or reflects off a surface. From our lab today, we can see that smooth and hard surfaces reflect sound well. Remember some of the places we said make really great echoes? We said the indoor pool, a hockey rink, we know a gym and a cafeteria do, empty classroom, the wooden floor, window, um, we said the bathroom and the shower. What other examples did you find? Sounds can be absorbed by items like fabric, foam, carpet, etc. What examples of sound absorbers did you find? Based on our results, we could say good echo characteristics are smooth and hard surfaces and not a lot of stuff, and good absorption characteristics our fabrics like carpet, blankets, curtains, clothes, etc., and a lot of stuff. What examples for good echo characteristics or good absorption characteristics did you find? Be on the lookout for some good echo characteristics when you're out and about. Definitely share your greatest echoes with me. All right, that's it for me. Take care. Peace. Peace.